had someone say that to me. Spiritual people who said that to me. Oh yes. I've had I have had people say it to me. I've heard that said in other places. I've never ever understood what it meant. I don't understand it. Uh huh. So what do you think that means? <laughs> we might not like the answer to this. Why not? I, I think it means you have to look at the way you're operating. <laughs> But you have more of an inverse ego than uh, an external ego. There are those who, I am the big I am, I'm fantastic, I'm wonderful. This is compensation for feeling useless. And then there's the inverse, you know, I don't feel that I'm the greatest thing since the invention of uh, cheese or whatever. Uh, I'm more retractive. I mean, it's the other side of the same coin still a sense of ego either retractive or expansive. So we have to just observe constantly whenever that sense of I, negative or over positive, starts to manifest in consciousness and step back from that and don't allow it any purchase for more than a few seconds. Because one way or the other, you are still inhabiting a false personality that we attach our sense of I-ness, our sense of being, to something which isn't us. Something that we never had up until the age of three, approximately. And if you can remember that sense that you had of freedom, of just being, not being this, not being that, not being the other, not even having an I. The little children don't say, I want, it's Johnny wants an apple, Jane wants a dolly, until that sense of ego starts and we begin to put an I on something that isn't me, onto my sense of ego. And I start to believe that this mechanism of retraction and repulsion is me and I fall for that and I grow up with it and then any slight that's coming at me whew, up comes the sense of ego or up comes the sense of retraction of fear people are looking at me badly or putting me down we buy into this false identity the I I think I am is not me at all I have bought into a mask, a personality. You know, in the Greek tragedy, the mask that they had, smiling mask and a miserable mask, uh, all these were called personas that they put on to show a different character. And personality comes from the persona. And we put on a personality to make people like us, to make or we copy some film star or our teacher or the head girl at school or whoever and create another false I. So who am I if I don't buy in to all that? If I am not the sense of ego, and this is just a mental reaction habit, and I can stand back and I can observe how stupid I was reacting in that way, then that action can't be me. And the personality I've created I can stand back from and say, so if I can stand back from those, I can stand back from my job, because once the ego sense starts to develop, people feel empty. And there's a hole in the being. The child doesn't feel empty. It's just full of the universe. It is God conscious without realizing it. The sage is God conscious with realizing it. In between, I feel unhappy. I feel unfulfilled. I want to fill the hole. Pop stars and actors want loads of applause because they want to fill this hole and it never works. So, so many of them commit suicide. People buy yachts and flash cars and join clubs 
um, anything, get some letters after my name so I feel bolstered up. And it doesn't work because I'm putting a plaster over a wound. The wound of ego, of false identity. So I identify it with my thoughts. Why do I do that? Who is actually thinking the thoughts? Are they not just coming? Isn't the reality that they just appear in my head and I can't get rid of the damn things? Am I thinking? The reality is you are being sorted. Who is doing that thinking? The French philosopher René Descartes, he said, cogito ergo sum, meaning I think, therefore I am. But he was putting Descartes before the horse. <laughs> he should have said, I am, therefore I think. And I think, therefore I suffer. And I suffer because I am foolish enough to buy into all the most depressive and miserable thoughts that come up in my consciousness. Why do I do that? Thoughts like water run to their lowest level. You can't afford to allow that to happen. You can't afford one second of negative thought because that's bringing your life energy down. So you are not your thoughts. Thoughts come, but I step back and watch them go by. I don't pick up the most nasty ones. So standing back, don't believe everything you think. That is an important mantra for all your life. Who is actually watching the thinking? If you're not the sense of ego, if you're not the personality, if you're not your job, I am a nurse, I am a scientist, I am a doctor, I am a footballer. No, you're not. That is what you do. That is not what you are. Strip yourself away from your job. Strip yourself away from the life roles that have been put on you. You're a niece, you're a nephew, you're a wife, you're a husband, you're an aunt, <coughs> you're an uncle, you're a grandma. Take all that away. Who are you? Who are you really? Who are you as the observer watching all these phenomena happening, all these ideas about what I am? That practice is the fastest step to self-realization, to awakening. To, and there comes a time even when the watcher has gone and there is just isness left. And it's the same isness you had in the first three years of your life. But you understand it now. And that is what's called self-realization or God-realization, same thing.